uh, autonomic nervous system next week, which shouldn't take too long to get through. Uh, and that will leave me the rest of the class to do a review for your guys' lab exam. How does that sound? Because right. I, I really do want people to, to do well. I'm going to try to give you as many opportunities as possible. Okay, uh, so we're going to talk about the endocrine system in lab today. And I will record this since I do have uh, some information up here on the board. So what is the endocrine system? Yeah, so the endocrine system is very similar to the nervous system. That's the first thing that you need to understand. The nervous system can be thought of as a direct control. If the nervous system wants something done, okay, it sends a signal down a neuron, and then that neuron dumps a neurotransmitter directly onto an effector, right, onto its target. So the nervous system is, is, is kind of a direct control mechanism. The endocrine system, however, is a little indirect. And instead of dumping a neurotransmitter directly onto an effector, like the nervous system, in the endocrine system, a hormone is secreted. And oftentimes, that hormone is circulated throughout the body to act somewhere distant from where that hormone was secreted. Does that, does that make sense? Okay, so that's the main difference is the endocrine system is a regulatory system that involves hormones that, that travel throughout the body in many cases, whereas the nervous system tends to be very direct. And sometimes neurotransmitters can end up being hormones, right? When when norepinephrine is released, okay, and it interacts with another neuron in your brain, we would call that a, a neurotransmitter. But when norepinephrine is released by your adrenal glands and it circulates throughout your body, we would call that a hormone. You guys, you guys okay with that? Here's the dirty little secret when it comes to the endocrine system, however. The endocrine system is not really what's pulling the strings. The endocrine system itself is controlled by the nervous system. So the endocrine system is really just a puppet of the nervous system. And where the story starts is one of the most important glands in the human body, the pituitary gland. And remember we we dissected, when we did the brain dissection, we were able to appreciate where the pituitary gland sits, right? Um, right underneath the optic chiasma, okay? And so oftentimes, the pituitary gland is known as the quote unquote master gland, right? You guys heard that term, and maybe that was even a term in the textbook, okay, the master gland. Here's the dirty little secret though. The pituitary gland hangs off of an area of the brain known as the hypothalamus. Okay. And the pituitary gland actually has two lobes to it. It has a lobe up front here we call the anterior pituitary gland or the anterior lobe. So this is anterior, um, just like this is anterior on my little diagram of the brain. And then I have the posterior lobe here and this is posterior. Now here's the interesting thing. Neurons have cell bodies in the hypothalamus. And when it comes to the posterior pituitary gland, the neurons actually travel down into the posterior pituitary gland. Okay. Okay, these neurons here, I've drawn them in green. That synth and so they actually synthesize hormones. And then those hormones are released into the circulatory system of the pituitary gland. So the posterior pituitary gland is a direct extension of the hypothalamus. The posterior pituitary gland is just where all of the axons, the axon terminals of the neurons that actually began in the hypothalamus live. Does, does that make sense? Okay. So any hormone that comes out of the posterior pituitary gland is secreted directly from the hypothalamus because those neurons their cell bodies begin in the hypothalamus. You guys, you guys cool with that? You okay with that? 
okay? And so hormones that you want to be aware of, and we'll, we'll go over this again, but you want, to, you want to be aware of that come out of the posterior pituitary gland. So blood comes in through an arterial, comes out through a venule, and then it has the hormones mixed in it, are oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone, or ADH. Oxytocin and ADH, or antidiuretic hormone, okay, are the most important hormones that come out of the posterior pituitary gland. Oxytocin exerts its effects on the uterus and the breasts, okay? And oxytocin is very important during pregnancy, during labor and delivery, following delivery of that baby, large amounts of oxytocin need to be released. And what it does is it stimulates the uterus to contract, okay? And that contraction of the uterus helps to stop the bleeding that's going on, right? Because as you guys know, the placenta is attached to the uterus and that placenta breaks off um, during the delivery process. And so mom needs to clamp things down and needs to achieve hemostasis. Um, so oxytocin is very important there. Oxytocin is also a neurotransmitter in the central nervous system associated with um, uh, a love and attachment emotions of love and attachment, but oxytocin as a hormone is important there. Antidiuretic hormone is very important and it exerts its action primarily on the kidneys. And so what is diuretic? What, what, is, what do I mean by diuretic? What does that mean? Diures means to pee a lot. So antidiuretic is anti-pee, makes you stop peeing. So antidiuretic hormone acts upon the kidneys and prevents the kidneys from getting rid of water, okay? So if you're getting dehydrated and your body needs to hold on to more water, antidiuretic hormone release from the posterior pituitary is one of the hormones involved in that, okay? You guys okay there? Now, if we move over to the anterior pituitary gland, the anterior pituitary gland has its own cells, its own hormone producing cells. So you might think, oh, so the anterior pituitary gland can run the show, right? Well, neurons in the hypothalamus release what are known as trophic hormones. And the trophic hormones actually tell the cells within the anterior pituitary what to do. So, no, they don't run the show. It's actually the hypothalamus still running the show, but it's just indirectly. It's, it's, it's being a little micromanager here. You guys okay with that? Now, there are several hormones that are released, okay, from the anterior pituitary. Um, prolactin is one, okay, it primarily acts upon the breast, um, particularly when we, when we talk about lactation or producing milk, okay. Um, ACTH, or adrenal corticotrophic hormone. Adrenal corticotrophic hormone acts upon the adrenal cortex. That's the outer part of the adrenal gland. And where are the adrenal glands located? Yeah, um, what's, what's the term for on top of or above? Ad, right? Ad is on top of. And then renal is kidney. So the adrenal gland is literally the gland on top of the kidney. Okay, and the kidneys, of course, are located in the retroperitoneal cavity. So it's a cavity behind the peritoneum. Here we go. So if I pull the stomach, the liver, the heart, and all that out, I've got my kidney here, and then on top of the kidney is the adrenal gland. You guys okay with that? Okay. And in the outer part of the adrenal gland, the cortex, okay, is where that ACTH acts on. Okay. And that causes the adrenal cortex to release two different types of hormones, glucocorticoids and mineral corticoids. These are also known as steroids. The glucocorticoids are steroids that help regulate sugar or glucose levels in the body. And the mineral corticoids are steroids that help regulate water and electrolyte balance in the body. Can you make you guys okay there? Okay. Um, Another set of hormones that come out of the anterior uh, pituitary are FSH and LH. That's 
um, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, FSH and LH. Okay? These primarily act upon the testes and the ovaries. Okay, so these are primarily sex hormones. Okay? And then the testes and the ovaries themselves release hormones okay, that are involved in um, secondary sexual development and uh, of course are um, involved in the menstrual cycle, not something we're going to talk about in any big detail, but what are the major hormones that are released by the testing is, is an ovaries, and we'll fill that in for completion purposes. Estrogen. Estrogen, yes. Estrogen. What else? Progesterone. Progesterone. And then testosterone. Testosterone as well. All right, good deal. All right. Um, another hormone that comes out of the anterior pituitary is GH or growth hormone. And this primarily acts upon bones and muscles and is responsible for growth. And remember earlier when we talked, earlier in the semester we talked about acromegaly. People like are really tall and have lots of bone development. Um, and that is the result of growth hormone. And then we also talked about another disorder called pituitary dwarfism. And that is where you have a lack of growth hormone, okay? And does that make sense why we call it pituitary dwarfism? Because it's a pituitary gland not releasing growth hormone. You guys cool with that? Um, and then the last hormone that comes out of the anterior that's important is something called TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone. This stimulates the thyroid gland, okay, to release thyroxin, or T3 and T4. Okay, and this is a hormone, these are hormones that regulate body metabolism, right? Regulate body metabolism. You guys okay there? So far so good? Now, um, I'll come back to this, but now what I want to do is I also want to talk about a gland that lies near the heart. Okay, it's a gland that lies near the heart and it is known as the thymus gland. The thymus gland. And the thymus gland releases something called thymazine. Okay, thymazine. And thymazine is very important when it comes to the maturation of T lymphocytes. Okay, those are a type of white blood cell, if you remember from cytology. And that's why we call them T lymphocytes, because they mature due to hormones from the thymus gland. You guys, you guys cool there? Okay, um, so I've drawn here another organ that kind of sits in front of um, the kidneys, and this, this organ right here, if you can see it, okay. <clears throat> right here, this is called the pancreas. And the pancreas is a very important digestive organ, okay? It releases what are known as pancreatic enzymes and those enzymes get released into our intestines and they help us uh, digest and absorb um, proteins and fats, lipids. But the pancreas is a very important in the uh, hormonal, okay, hormonally as well. Um, so when you look at the microscopic anatomy of the pancreas, you have these circular structures within the pancreas. And these are known as the islets Islets of Langerhans, okay? The islet cell clusters, or the islets of Langerhans. And the islets of Langerhans contain three different cell types, primary cell types. They contain alpha cells, beta cells, and B cells, okay? And so if you look at this islet, okay, the outer part is gonna contain alpha cells, and these are cells that secrete a hormone called glucagon, okay? Glucagon is important because glucagon acts on another organ, the liver. Okay, it acts on the liver. And in the liver, you have a lot of what's known as glycogen. Okay, glycogen is when you combine lots of monosaccharides, right? You combine lots of monosaccharides to make a polymer of sugars. 
and glycogen breaks down into glucose. So when your blood sugar gets low, okay, these alpha cells can release glucagon. That glucagon can tell your liver to release sugar, uh, to convert um, glycogen into glucose, and your blood sugar levels will go back up. Sir, question: When you get some more glucagon, does it really pull all of that sugar out? Like completely? it causes, yeah, a lot of that glycogen to break down. A lot of it. Yeah, yeah. So if somebody glucagon is a, we we can actually use that as a drug for people that are what we call hypoglycemic. If their blood sugar gets low, glucagon is one of the drugs we can give. So we can actually give some of these hormones and use them as medications. And you'll give somebody glucagon, and if they have glycogen stores, that glycogen will break down into glucose. Okay. Now the beta cells in the center, they produce a hormone called insulin. Insulin is a hormone that allows or facilitates the movement of glucose into the cell through receptors or through channels across the cell membrane, right? That's what we call facilitated diffusion, All right? So glucose can't get into your cells without insulin, right? And then the D cells, kind of in the middle here, these produce a hormone called somatostatin. And somatostatin inhibits glucagon and insulin production. And somatostatin also inhibits um, growth hormone. So you can see I have some inhibitory feedback going on here as well with some of these hormones. Okay, you guys okay with that? Um, moving along, some of the minor players, the stomach. The stomach has some hormone activity. If you look in the stomach wall, you have what are called chief cells there. And these chief cells release something called pepsinogen. And pepsinogen is a pro-hormone. And what happens is when the stomach pH gets low, so when acid gets released in the stomach, that acid converts the peps, pepsinogen into pepsin. And pepsin is an enzyme that helps us digest proteins. So that's a cool little mechanism for when you eat and your stomach acid levels get low, right? Because you eat and you start releasing hydrochloric acid in your stomach, um, that is a good mechanism for making that pepsin that helps you digest uh, primarily proteins, okay? And then uh, finally, I want to talk about the kidney, okay? The kidney it also releases hormones. It releases a hormone called renin, okay? So when the kidney is not getting perfused or your blood pressure is very low, the kidney will release renin, and then renin activates a molecule that's circulating in your blood called angiotensinogen. And it turns angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1. And then that angiotensin 1 circulates through your lungs here. And as it circulates through your lungs, your lungs secrete an enzyme called ACE, or angiotensin converting enzyme. And that converts angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. And that's the active form of angiotensin. Angiotensin II causes your blood vessels to constrict. So when your blood vessels constrict, that kind of pops your blood pressure up a little bit. And then angiotensin II also comes over here, and it acts upon the adrenal gland and causes the adrenal gland to release a hormone called aldosterone. And aldosterone then feeds back to the kidneys and tells the kidneys to hold on to water. Crazy, huh? A lot of crazy, crazy loops going on here. Okay, so those are uh, some of the major hormones and hormone systems that you guys want to be aware of as you're working through this lab. Um, there's not a whole lot to do here other than just filling in questions, please do take a look at the microscope slides. That's really where you want to focus the rest of your lab. This, that shouldn't take too long though. Um, you want to look at the slide of the adrenal gland, the thyroid gland, and particularly the pancreas. Make sure you can identify the islet cells. You have pictures in your lab book, but make sure you can identify those islets, okay? Because that may be something that will be on the um, upcoming lab exam. You guys okay with that? All right, that's all I have. Um, so hopefully this shouldn't, should be fairly quick and you guys should get through this 
um, pretty easily. Uh, make sure that you are able to, to identify the major glands on the models though, right? Make sure you can identify the adrenal glands, the pancreas, the thyroid, okay, those, those kinds of things. And you'll be in good shape. <laughs>